So we're going to be working today really as an intro to the kin stretch level. Um, let me just explain what kin stretch is and what the goals of this particular class are, as well as kin stretch goals in general. Kin stretch is the group class version of the mobility work that I'm already teaching you guys in take 10. And sorry for saying guys, I'm trying not to do that anymore. Um, kin stretch's goals are to build body awareness and control. So you're going to find that already again in, in all the mobility work you do. But it's a class setting. So you're also going to uh, hopefully for the live class, get this chance to ask me questions and to ask questions during class and to get feedback after class. Uh, the hope is to help you deepen your understanding of how to do the mobility work in the program. The more you practice, the better you're going to get and you're going to refine it better. Um, you're also going to get a chance to identify more and more of the areas that you may wish to work on in your personal practice. So doing mobility work globally is going to help you understand that maybe it's your right side of your neck that you need to work on. And then I already mentioned the feedback. So what you're not going to get in kin stretch classes is specific targeted work for your particular thing. And you're going to get that through a combination of working on take 10 and building your personal practice. But this will round it out and give you lots of experience. And it's a fun workout kind of environment as well. So I, ho I hope you enjoy it. I love taking kin stretch classes. So I hope you enjoy taking this one with me. Okay, there's a few rules. Number one is I don't want you to go into pain. So if anything hurts, that's what you want to avoid for the purposes of this group class. It's not an all or nothing rule all your time, but if your neck hurts, just make your movement smaller when you're doing the movement that could hurt it. Make it smaller, make it lighter, modify it, skip it. In particular, the movement that you want to look avoid is if you're bending your neck to this side, you want to avoid what's called the closing angle, which is the side you're bending towards. Conversely, if you're bending towards this side, if there was pain here, that's your closing angle. If you're bending back and the pain's on the back, that's your closing angle. So it's wherever the joint is getting smaller. When you feel closing angle pain, that is a red flag. So some pain, you want to avoid it because we're in a class, we don't want to upset your nervous system. Closing angle pain is almost always a sign that the joint doesn't have enough space to actually do its job. So a joint should be able to basically have some space so it can move kind of like that. If closing angle pain happens, it means that one side of the joint is sort of jamming against the other side of the joint. And that's usually where you need some manual work to help you out. So just watch for that. We can talk about it more after class as well. I'm going to be the demonstration model in this class because I prefer learning uh, when there isn't a second person in there as a model. I'm very bendy and I'm very bendy in specific ways. So the way you do these moves is very likely to be very different from what you see in my body. That is 100% normal. So don't try to achieve the same shape as I'm achieving. Try to achieve the same intention as I'm cueing you. And again, um, Chris and I will be around watching. You can jump on, uh, unmute yourself if you've got a question in the middle of an exercise about how to do the exercise. Uh, but otherwise we'll again be able to talk about everything after class. But this is my shoulder internal rotation. That might be your shoulder internal rotation. Both are totally fine. You're just gonna find what you've got. This is not internal rotation, that's cheating. So you wanna watch for the cheats and find your personal boundaries. And that's one of the goals of all of the work we're gonna do together. And then uh, finally, just to repeat it, uh, questions about anything in depth at the end, questions about form and how to modify an exercise, jump on during the class and I'll answer them then. Okay, so hopefully you are ready to go and we're going to start um, with some cars because cars are the warm up for kin stretch work, which is one of the reasons I teach them so much. I'm going to do this kneeling partly so you can see me and I'll be kneeling on a block, which you can choose to do if kneeling is a good position for you. If kneeling is not good for you, you could do a lot of this seated in a chair. You could do this cross-legged. Uh, you can modify the base position to standing. It's really up to you. So this is kin stretch, which means it's a little more work than your morning cars. And that means you're going to think about squeezing your hands in towards your side and creating some tension there. You can brace your abs for this a little bit. So your breathing will be a little bit shallower. And we're gonna start with some neck flexion and extension. So you're gonna do about five flexing down towards your collarbone and you're segmentally reaching your chin to your chest. And then you're going to segmentally try to unreach your chin and reach, 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 reach your head back and keep it long as you go. And you're gonna go at your own one mile an hour pace. You don't necessarily have to go at my pace for about five rounds of this flexion and extension. 
And let me show you some other things to look for. So as you reach back here, you don't want your whole rib cage to be lifting with you. So you could have one hand on your low ribs to help you monitor that. And you keep going. I'm just gonna show you what you don't wanna do on the flexion. You don't wanna do a big head drop. So think about reaching the back of your head back and then curling up like the cinnamon snail as you curl your chin forward. And then you want to reach back and up and along as you reach back. And dare, if you're concerned about spinal osteoporosis in the cervical spine, you can make that a smaller extension move as well. As you can see, I'm moving slowly and I'm also moving as though I'm in jelly. There's an intention of creating tension in this work. Let's finish up. You should have about five and we're gonna move into rotation. I'm gonna come back to the, actually I'm gonna stay sideways for you because I want you to ramp up your head. So head ramping is like you're pulling your ponytail back and up at about 45 degrees and then straight as though there's a pull in your spine, you're gonna rotate all the way towards your left and then you're gonna rotate all the way towards your right. And you're gonna do about five of these rotations as well. Think about looking behind your left shoulder. Think about looking behind your right shoulder. Your intention with this work is to move segmentally. That may or may not happen, but if you imagine that there's seven vertebrae in your neck, because there are, you wanna think about each of those vertebrae contributing to the movement one by one by one by one by one. One thing to watch out for here is a lift of the chin at the end. So a tendency to lift the chin at the end to try to get a little bit further. And you are just trying to get as much rotation as you can without changing the plane of your head. So this nice pure rotation, thinking about moving through jelly or maybe some wet concrete as though there is something in your way that you're trying to push with rotation. And what that's gonna give you is a little bit more nervous system feedback. Let's come back to center because you should be around about five here. And we're going to now move into lateral bending and I am going to go front to you here. So everything else is still tense in your body and that's gonna help you stay still. And that's extra important as you start to just tip your right ear towards your right shoulder and then left ear towards left shoulder. So you're just thinking pure lateral bend. You're not just flopping though. You wanna think about one vertebrae, next vertebrae, next vertebrae, next vertebrae, moving at that one mile an hour, not letting your chin lift up. So same thing, you can almost imagine yourself smushed between two panes of glass here so that if your head starts to do something like this or something like falling forward, that pane of glass is gonna stop you and you're just gonna move smoothly like a two-dimensional human reaching. As you're warming up, you're noticing how things feel. So these axial rotations or axial cars are a nice way to get warmed up. And these are also a good way to save your work after you're done. Noticing if there's any tightness or restriction, definitely feeling my right side here. Watching for your head pulling your shoulder over. Chris, can you check that question for me? You wanna keep your shoulders still. So that's one reason you're squishing your hands into your sides a little bit. Uh, breathe through your nose and uh, just normally, no breathing specifics to cue you here. If you're used to timing your breath to movement, I won't do that right now during this class. So finishing up about five here, we're gonna turn this into a full neck car. So here you are, again, some tension through your body, arms are tense, you're gonna start by flexing your head down without dropping it down the long way. Scrape your chin across your collarbone to look over your left shoulder. Now rotate so your ear falls behind your left shoulder, reach the crown of your head back, roll your whole head around, right ear comes down behind the right shoulder, rotate so your chin is facing your right shoulder, scrape your chin across your collarbone and continue in that direction scraping across, chin comes to left shoulder, ear comes down as the chin lifts, roll your head through the back end of your range, ear comes to the right shoulder, chin comes to the right shoulder, coming around to pause in the middle and reversing. 
checking in on your whole body tension as you reach your chin towards your right shoulder, making it smaller and if you need to, as you roll through here, maybe making it lighter if you have to, but hopefully you're working a little harder than you would for morning cars, maybe around 50%. If you haven't done cars yet at all, you're just exploring the movement. If you are more familiar with them, then you're gonna start really seeing if you can add a little bit more effort and tension on each round of the cars here. Reaching back, staying long, coming over. Here comes the left, head rotates to touch the chin to the left shoulder, scraping the chin to the middle, and then coming back up to where you started. Hopefully that felt awesome. We're gonna do exactly the same thing for the upper back now. So Dara, this is the one you wanna keep small and light. So seated is really helpful for thoracic spine because you're gonna get some feedback from your pelvis. Thinking here, not about moving your head, but about moving from your collarbone down, you're gonna candy cane yourself into kind of a, a C shape. And you're gonna go as low as you wanna go here, as low as you can without your pelvis moving as an option. You could go less low as well, but I'm starting to lift my butt up. So I don't wanna go any lower than that. And now I'm gonna stack myself back on top of my spine. I'm gonna pause here. Now I'm gonna put my hands on my low ribs. I'm gonna reach my collarbones back and up and along, and I'm not thrusting my ribs here. I'm just thinking about extending by reaching back and up. And you can see this is a very small movement. This is my spinal extension. And now from the bottom, I'm gonna restack my spine back to my normal, pausing here, curling forward, collarbone, sternum, bra area, nipples come down, curling forward, all the way down if you want to, smaller if that is safer for your body and feels better. So you're always in charge of feeling safe here and then stacking back up. And here again, we're gonna go for about five of these, pausing in the middle, holding those low ribs down, hands and abdominal muscles, reaching the collarbones up and back, reaching the sternum up and back, reaching your nipples up and back, trying to feel the upper back muscles arch here. So very small movement for most of us. And then starting from the bottom up, restacking to straight curling yourself forward like a candy cane, breaking this down vertebrae by vertebrae. You could have quite a few parts of your spine engaged in this hinge and then stacking back up. All the way stacked and then pausing, holding those abs down, really trying to get some isolated extension through here at the top like so. Your speed doesn't have to be the exact same as mine. If you're done your five way faster than I'm done my five though, you may wanna do some extra or even better is you might wanna slow yourself down next time so that you can start to pay attention to these particular movements. This is a, a movement that benefits from being done slowly. Pause in the center, reset, start, top of the spine back, back reaches back, extends, extends back, all the way back and then Restack yourself to straight and then from the top down, curling down like a candy cane all the way that is safe for you today and then back up and then one more extension and we are then going to move into rotation. So one more extension, you're paused, your abs are on, you're reaching your collarbones up and back, trying to get some upper back movement, very hard for most of us to connect to you but that's okay, that's why we're doing this work. Trying not to just make a giant rib thrust. So if you feel your ribs go, you've gone too far and then back to straight. From straight, you can check in with your low ribs. You wanna make sure that they're stacked over your pelvis. There's not a big rib edge there. And now what we're gonna do is take your hands to your sternum as your guideline and you're just going to rotate yourself all the way left, like wringing out a dish towel. See how far you can rotate Take a breath on that rotation just for fun. Deep breath into your bra strap or low ribs. And then we're gonna go the other way. And we're just gonna do three of these ones because I don't wanna spend all of our time in the warm up. We've got lots to cover today. All the way right, all the way left. Maybe a little bit faster. 
just to warm up, but really also trying to be segmental here. How far can you make your sternum go? So if you keep your nose in line with your hands and your sternum, you're gonna get a truer sense of your rotation than if you let your head reach over your shoulder. So there's nothing wrong with your head reaching. It's just gonna make you think that you're turning further than you really are, which isn't really the goal right now. One more time to the right. And then we're going to move on from here into lateral bending. So I'm going to turn and face you, but you can stay exactly where you are. So here's where you really want your butt to stay grounded. You don't want to come light off either sit bone. Here, let's cross our hands over our front. Imagine that you're moving through concrete and you're just going to side bend, but as you side bend, you're lengthening. You could imagine that there's somebody pushing down on your left shoulder and you're resisting them. And now they're still pushing down on your left shoulder and you're pushing your way back up. And then let's side bend the other way. You're side bending down, they're pushing you and you're trying not to let them push you. When you go as far as you can go, you're gonna pause and then you're gonna push them off you so you can stand all the way back up straight. Let's do two more of those on each side. Keeping your left sit bone heavy, you're gonna arch over to the right hand side. And then you're gonna push that imaginary person off you so that you can stand up straight or sit up straight as this, the case might be. Continuing here, nice, slow, still thinking segmental. So now we're a sideways candy cane and now we're an effortful candy cane pushing our person off us. One more on either side, lateral bend, right. Lateral bend, left. Beautiful, Chris, there's a question there. Would you mind checking in the chat? All the way straight. All right, we're gonna do the whole T-spine car as well. Uh, somebody asked if it's important to be kneeling. No, you can do this in any position at all. If kneeling is not comfortable for you, you can sit on a chair, do it standing. Wide-legged standing is nice for this. You do not have to kneel for any of this. Curling down like a candy cane now all together. Now you're going to rotate just like we rotated, but we're in candy cane shape. We're going to rotate so that our sternum faces forward into a side bend. And then we're going to reach and rotate around like we did before with the neck car. Side bending then to the right, rotating to face down and curling forward to face down as well. Let's do one more of those. And then Chris is gonna tell me what the question is that came up. What's up? Uh, Shauna says, if I get shaky, am I going too hard? Uh, Shauna asked if getting shaky means she's going too hard. There's a lot of reasons you could shake in this work. Uh, it's usually your nervous system telling you that it's not too sure about where we're going. Let me just pause here in the center and we're gonna reverse. You're going to switch right, rotate up, reach yourself up from your side bend and lean back, side bend left, curl yourself forwards, curling down and continuing in that direction. Again, thinking about moving through concrete. So shaking is fairly normal in this work. Uh, if you're shaking wildly and violently, you might want to back off. It might be a little bit more than you should be going into, but it's pretty normal, I would say. Um, so you can play with that, adjust based on how um, comfortable you are with the amount of shaking that's happening. Side bending, reaching back, heart reaches back. Try to make this from your upper back as well as from your lower back. It's very easy just to dump into your lower back. Right sit bone stays down as you curl to the left, coming into center and unbending yourself. Okay, so moving on to our shoulder blades. I'm gonna go backwards to you so that you can see me here. I don't have the most visible shoulder blades, but I'll do my best. Uh, and of course, yeah, feel free to, you know, you can change the tall kneeling as well if that feels better for you or a chair, anything is good. You can bolster however you like. You've got lots of options. So. Shoulder blades, we're gonna start by lifting our shoulder blades. This is called elevation. And then we're gonna pull them down. I want you to actively pull them down into your pockets. That is called depression. So lifting all the way up, like you're trying to wear your shoulders like earrings and then pulling all the way down as far as you can. Do some work to pull them down. Don't just let gravity do it. And then pull all the way up, elevation, pull down again depression and let them come back to where they like to live. Now for the other direction, I'm just gonna go sideways to you here. 
you're going to, and you've done this all, I think in the beginning classes here, you're gonna reach forward. This is protraction. And then you're gonna pull back using your shoulder blades. So you can see, I don't have to bend my elbows to change where my arms are. And I'm gonna reach forward and I'm gonna pull back. And as you pull back, you don't want your ribs to go. So you may not pull as far back as you feel like you could, but you're gonna manage your ribs. And you're just gonna do another pull forward and then a pull back and then a pull forward. And you're trying to keep everything else still. Your abs are on, especially to keep those ribs down. You're not letting your chin lift. That's what I like to do. You're just pulling through. Oh, wow, the monkeys are jumping around in the trees. That's crazy. Okay, now we're gonna do full circle. So hands stay in front of you. You're gonna pull your shoulder blades up, pull them forward while they're up and pull them down while they're forward. And what I want you to think about here is you've got those four directions. I want you to turn those four directions into the biggest, smoothest circle you can. So I don't want anyone making squares or I want you to do your best not to make squares. Sometimes squares happen to us, but we want to turn these four beautiful directions into the biggest, beautiful circles, most beautiful circles that we can. All the way up and then pause and then reverse. So all the way up, you're gonna squeeze together. You're gonna pull down as best you can. Try to find the edges of your big circles. You wanna carve out space for your scapula. Your scapula love to be able to move. Movement, movability in your scapula is part of how you get stability in them as well. So all the way up through, making sure you're not rib thrusting as you squeeze all the way down. Feel the bottoms of your scapula pockets all the way up and we'll let that go. And hopefully that felt really nice. Okay. Um, I'm gonna answer those T-spine questions after because uh, we're moving on from T-spine right now. So I'll get to those at the end of the class. We're gonna do a fun thing for shoulders today. At least I think it's fun. Put your hands together in front of you. And here is one where your ribs are definitely staying down the whole time. And so at a certain point with your hands, as you start raising your hands above you, you're gonna start noticing your ribs want to start coming with you. And that stage, you can start widening your hands. You'll find they open so that your thumbs come together. So let that happen. Keep rotating so that your thumbs and palms face out. Reach your hands behind you and see how early you can glue them back together behind you. And that's kind of a joke because you probably can't glue them back together behind you unless you're way more awesome than I am, but you're gonna try to, your thumbs are gonna face forward and they're gonna come all the way down to your side. And then you're gonna reverse. So palms are facing each other. You're lifting straight up. You're not lifting your rib cage. You're not lifting your shoulder blades a ton here, but you can squeeze them together. Palms come to face down this time as they circle around and see if you can have your palms come and join each other in the front of your body somewhere, wherever works for you. And then you're gonna come down all the way in front of you. So hands come together, create some pressure, push one hand into the other a little bit, raise straight up as high as you can while your palms are still pushing into each other. Try not to let your ribs go. At a certain point, you're probably gonna to have to start unfolding your hands, your thumbs come together as your palms peel out. Keep that palm peeling, but make that from your shoulders. Keep reaching, palms come down, keep rotating all the way this time until your pinky fingers actually face forward. Try to get the backs of your hands together behind you and bring them down by your sides because they're not gonna to touch. And then we're gonna reverse, thumbs lead, don't, curl forwards here, just lift up your hands as high as they can go. And then when they have to start rotating, palms rotate down, reaching around, making a giant Y with your palms facing forward, palms come together as close to the top of your head as you can without your ribs coming, palms touch together and come all the way down. So that's a double arm shoulder curve. And now we're going to do some axial rotations. So same thing as we did with our heads and our um, T-spine, but for the arms. So let's go right arm. I'm actually gonna come into a straddle because I'm ready for a change from that kneeling position. Never feel like you shouldn't change your position. Bicep points up, rotate to bicep pointing down. 
watch for that shrugging happening. In fact, I want you to try to shrug, keep rotating, try to lift up your whole shoulder. That's what we don't want. So let that come down, rotate externally, bicep rolls towards the back wall behind you, and then rotate internally. And this time, don't let any shrugging happen. All the way down, all the way up, all the way down. So this is glenohumeral joint rotation, shoulder rotation, such a key movement. Let's do this in another way. So this is the monkey arm way, very appropriate for me right now. Hands are up. Pretend you're pulling an elastic band as you rotate down. So my movement is still being created by that exact same bicep rotation. Now my bicep is facing down and then I'm pulling an imaginary elastic band all the way back up so that my bicep faces more up all the way down, like so. Notice how my elbow is staying at exactly the same height as my shoulder. I want you to try to do that same thing as well. So it's important not to wobble your arm bone around. We're just trying to rotate here. So this control of the height of your arm bone is part of the exercise, all the way up. And let's try one more. Swivel so that your elbow is directly in front of your body. This is the same thing, I'm rotating internally. My bicep is rolling down towards the ground. Don't have as much range when my arm is here. That's cool. And then all the way up, this is external rotation. And then all the way down, internal. Keeping that elbow the same height as the shoulder as best as you can today. Not letting that shoulder blade come up. Try letting the shoulder blade come up. See what it's like when it does. Set it back down. One more external rotation. We're using some effort here. Not a crazy amount of effort because we're still warming up, but enough to maybe be breaking out a sweat, a little bit of a sweat. Notice that my wrist is not moving. It's just about that shoulder rotation. One more internal. I said this was the last one, but I don't remember where we started. So we'll just let that go. Okay, so those are the basic rotational movements we're gonna be doing today. Let's go to the other side. So. Bicep is facing up. This is your, your external rotation. And now you're going to rotate to down. Try bringing your shoulder blade along for the ride. So it's like a shrug. It's like you just keep rotating until it's not even your shoulder doing it. And then let that come down. Try to make it only from the shoulder. All the way up to external rotation. Ring it out like a dish towel. See, can you get a little further than you, than you thought you could? all the way down, driving from the shoulder here. So you could drive from your hand, but today I'm asking you to think about rotating your bicep by rotating your shoulder. Even if you drive from the hand, you're still gonna get your shoulder rotating, but I want you to think about the origin of the movement being up here at the shoulder joint and the hand is following along for the ride. And down. And now let's bend the arm, elbow stays at the same height, pull an, el an elastic band all the way up into external. And then that elastic band changes direction miraculously. And you can come all the way down into internal, all the way up into external, putting some effort in. But if the effort doesn't feel good for you, modifying it to suit your body all the way down. So in the end, this ends up being like strength training for your joints. So when people ask if strength training is important for you, uh, in movement work, yes, it can absolutely still be important for you, even though it doesn't always look like traditional strength training. We are strength training our end ranges of motion. So learning to create effort here is a really good skill. One more up. All right, let's rotate and swivel our arms straight in front of us. And now you're going to do that same thing. One down, changes how much range you have, doesn't it? How you change, how you hold your body will affect what your joints can do. And it'll affect how gravity works on them too. So it's interesting to create different positional options all the way up and all the way down. Your elbow is in the screen. Gracias. And one more up. This is external rotation. One more down, internal. Let's take a little break from that. We're gonna finish the cars portion of today's class with our elbows, I'm going to come into tall kneeling because my hands tend to drag on the ground uh, otherwise. I'm gonna use my block now for some 
tension creation. You could do the standing if tall kneeling isn't good for you and squeezing the block is a great technique. I've got a little bit of pressure in my abs. My palms are flat. I've got my elastic bands, my imaginary elastic bands around my palms again. I'm squeezing them all the way up to my biceps. Barbara, I know you were interested in some tennis elbow work. This should be your absolute go-to if uh, you're working through tennis elbow. This, you could do this with weights 40 times a day, and that would be an awesome idea for most, most of us tennis elbows folks, because you got to load a tendon all the way up, all the way down, like so. So it's palms up, squeezing to the biceps, hands flip. Keep feeling like you're doing that flip. Keep trying to rotate more as you squeeze your upper arms into your ribs and come down, rotate up, rotate back down. Keep feeling like you're trying to rotate down further as you bring the backs of your hands up to your biceps. Rotate to palms up, press down. Rotate to palms down, press back up. One more time, rotate palms up. Keep feeling like you're rotating. You wanna imagine that you can rotate more throughout this whole movement and then rotate down all the way like so. Okay, and now I just realized that Christopher is looking at the phone that I need to use for timing everything. If you wanna go and computerize, you should do that. Thank you, babe. Chris has been very helpful. All right, now we're gonna move on to the um, more, what's the right word? More mobility changing part of the class. So we've been working on cars because they warm you up and because they maintain your movement, but we're going to work on pails and rails to help improve your mobility. If you are a hypermobile person, this particular exercise is modified for you, but for the purpose of this class, um, you can do this um, with us. Just don't go into your complete end range. So I'll talk you through this. So the first we're going to do is we're going to lie on our sides. I've got a 90 degree angle at my legs. And I've got my arm out, out in front of me. And this is a familiar position because we just did this. This is my elbow in front of my shoulder and I've just lain down like so. So we're gonna start here with elbow in front of shoulder lying on our side. And we're gonna do just a couple more of those axial cars just to make sure you're really comfortable with this position. This is called a sleeper position. You're gonna see it sometimes if you, if you go on Instagram and you see Kim stretch people teaching. So you can just try pulling that elastic band. This is your internal rotation and this is your external rotation. And here as well, you could accidentally bypass and cheat by lifting up your shoulder blade. So you can try that. All right, so now never do that again. You can reset your shoulder blade. And we're gonna be doing some pails and rails in this position. So you're gonna take your top hand and you're going to passively put your bottom hand into internal rotation. So you're gonna use your top hand, you're gonna stretch yourself down and you're gonna do it gently. So this is an exercise that if you move into it with too much force before you're adapted to it, you can definitely do some damage to your shoulder. So today we're going to be doing this at a very light tension. We're going to be doing our pails and rails at a 30 to 50% tension. And based on how much shoulder work you do, I want you to choose where you are in that scale. If you think that this is totally new to you, go for 30%. If you're a pro, I still want you to go to 50% because we're going to do a long hold. Now I'm at my end range here. That's because I do not have a hypermobile glenohumeral joint. If you do have a hypermobile glenohumeral joint, don't even go into your end range. You would normally skip the stretch part and just do the part that's at the end, but you would do it outside of your end range, okay? So, um, so anyone hypermobile, don't go all the way into your end range. If you have a question right now, Chris isn't watching the chat anymore, so just uh, come on and ask it. Everybody else with me, we're just gonna hang out and stretch for about two minutes and I'm gonna explain what we're doing for our pails and rails. Gotcha. So, yes. How far is hypermobile? If you don't know that you're hypermobile, you're probably not and you can probably- No, no, I'm, I'm very hypermobile. I just didn't know if I was in my shoulders. <laughs> okay. Um, like I didn't, like, so how far does that arm, like what? Yeah, like I have hypermobile, hypermobility in certain a lot of a lot of areas I didn't, never even thought of my shoulder that way so I just don't know if I'm going too far got it so pretty um 
a pretty advanced amount of shoulder mobility. Like I've got a fairly mobile shoulder and this is as far as I'm getting. If your shoulder is flopping on the ground, I would modify out of it and not be in that end range. Generally, so this is my active range right now where I can get to actively. I can go all the way down, probably further down and I can get to here actively. You can probably work anywhere in your active range that you can control. But if you're very hypermobile, you're gonna be able to push yourself way deeper. And so I don't want you to push deeper. So you could go anywhere within your active range as a safe place to work. Does that help? I will hope that Yes, that, that helps. Okay, awesome. So um, the movement we're gonna be doing, the pails and rails, is going to be the same rotational movement we've been working on. It's one of the reasons you guys just keep stretching. The pales movement will be to press as though you're going into external rotation in that direction, but you're not actually going to move at all. You're going to keep your other hand on top of your arm so that you're not going to allow that bottom arm to move. That'll be the same for hypermobile people or non-hypermobile people. The rails will be trying to go deeper into your internal rotation. So you're gonna be trying to press that whole arm down further by rotating internally. For the hypermobile people, you're gonna put your other hand there and you're gonna press into it. For the non-hypermobile people, you're gonna to try to create more range by pressing down further, okay? And we're gonna start that in about five seconds and we're slowly gonna dial up the work. So you're gonna start just in your same stretch. And now you're gonna tense up a little bit through your abs and you're gonna make 10% effort pressing your arm back up as though you could rotate, but don't let it move. And now you're gonna go 20% and 30% and 40% maybe, and maybe stop at 30, maybe go as high as 50, but you're not working super hard here for anyone. And now you're just gonna hold. You're gonna hold and you're gonna to try to hold steady. So what's really important here is that you've got an even amount of tension. You don't want to flop around. You're learning to control tension is kind of the biggest goal of this exercise. So you're just trying to maintain that really nice 50% effort for me, holding here, working through the shoulder. It's not super hard, but it's not super easy either. And then on my count, you're going to let go of the tension slowly, and then you're going to reverse and you're going to try to work the other direction. Okay, so in three, two, one, you're gonna start trying to press into greater internal rotation. You can use 100% effort for this. You can really work to try to get a little bit deeper. But remember, if you're hypermobile, you can work into something that's gonna stop you from going any further. If you're not hypermobile, keep pressing down, holding there for three, two, one. Relax all of your effort. If you're not hypermobile, use your other hand to go a little bit deeper into the stretch if that's available to you. And now there's a breathing technique. You're gonna breathe into any tension you feel, deep breath into your shoulder joint, slower breath out, trying to exhale tension here. We want our nervous system to help um, to feel safe. And so you're gonna use your breath to help your nervous system feel relaxed to create some, um, to create some softness. Slow breath in, slower breath out. Keep holding there. I'm just gonna reset the timer and we're gonna hold for about two more breaths. And then we're gonna go into one more round of those pails and rails, okay? So on my count, you're going to again, start creating tension to get out of the stretch. So in three, two, one, Create some tension in your abs. Start pressing gently into your hand to try to escape the stretch. 10%, very light. 20%, 30%, still not very heavy. You could stop here or you could go as high as 50% of your total available effort. And you're gonna try to maintain whatever tension le level you've chosen. And I don't know about you, but I'm definitely fatiguing here. I did a bunch of this yesterday to, to get ready for class. Holding steady. And we're gonna hold for about five more seconds and then we're gonna reverse. So when we reverse, you're going to relax out of it. Five, four, three, two, 
one and then 100% effort in the other direction, trying to go deeper into the stretch for about 10 seconds here, really pressing down, really working hard here. This is gonna be the most effort I ask for in this class, holding for three, two, one other hand goes back, trying to get deeper into the stretch unless you're hypermobile, in which case you're just relaxing here, not trying to get deeper. Deep breath in, slow breath out. Most of us are gonna be deeper in this position than we can normally get to. Please don't exit the position yet if that's possible for you. We're gonna work here a little bit because now we have an opportunity to create some physical changes. So we've just created nervous system changes, hopefully, uh, but now we wanna create physical changes. We're gonna do something called passive range holds. If you are hypermobile, you're going to do these again, a little bit outside of your end range. So you're basically gonna keep doing those pails and rails, but you can choose a different spot to do the pails and rails, okay? For everybody who feels like they don't have any hypermobility, what we're gonna do is we're gonna use our top hand, we're gonna stretch the lower arm, we're gonna go deep, not so deep that it doesn't feel safe, but you're gonna go to a comfortable end range for you. And then what you're going to do is you're going to tense everything up, you're gonna hold everything, give it a try. So you're tensing everything up and then you're gonna slowly remove your top hand, but try not to let the bottom arm spring back up. It will spring back up, but you're gonna try not to let it spring back up. And then you're gonna put your top hand back. You're gonna relax everything down and you're gonna go deeper. You guys all hang out there. If you're hypermobile, what you're gonna do is while we're all holding, you're going to press into your other hand. So you're gonna be out of your end range. You're gonna be pressing isometrically, not moving, trying to create some strength in different positions, okay? So everybody who's doing the passive range holds, you're gonna go back into your passive range. You're gonna start pulling your hand into deeper internal rotation, using your shoulders. Now trying to maintain that position as you lift your hand up for five, four, three, two, one. Top hand goes down, arm relaxes. Try to passively go back to where you were before. Deep breath here, start creating tension. Try to internally rotate as much as you possibly can here. Lift the top hand for three, four, five, six, seven. I don't know why I started counting at three and relax that all down and breathe. One breath, create tension, press into deeper internal rotation, hold that. And one, two, three, four, five count and relax that all out. Stay here, relax everything. Use your top hand to bring yourself up to neutral. This is your neutral for our purposes right now. Everybody can work on this one, hypermobile and non-hypermobile. We're going to do something called eccentric neural grooving. This is literally my favorite thing. What you're going to do is you're going to start having a war between your hands. Your bottom hand wants to externally rotate. Your top hand doesn't want to let you do that. Maybe about 50% effort. And now you're going to start letting your top hand win, but you're still fighting with your bottom hand. And you're going to go all the way down to where you end or to where you can no longer create strength with your bottom hand, then you're going to relax completely. Use your top hand to pick up your bottom hand back to neutral and you're going to create that war again. So it's just a gentle war between your top hand and your bottom hand. And your top hand gets to win this one and it's slowly moving your resisting bottom hand all the way into your end range. And then you're going to pause relax completely, top hand moves the bottom hand back. You're gonna have one more. It's like an arm wrestle with yourself, pressing into your two arms equally and then allowing the top hand to win and push you down into your deep internal rotation while you're creating strength and resistance. Pause, relax, come all the way back up. And that is it for that side. We're gonna switch to the other side. So the setup is the same. You are going to lie down on your side. You can use your block behind your head for some support. And here, legs are bent, 
We're going to do a couple of those axial cars again, just to remind your body what movements we're making here. So your elbow is directly in front of your shoulder, and then you're going to rotate internally and externally. Internally, that's your rails, that's your second direction in the pails and rails. Externally is your pails direction. All the way internally, actively. So if you've got hypermobility, that'll be your end range. If you don't have hypermobility, relax and see if you can get a little deeper possibly here. And I don't know if you can tell, but I've got a lot less internal rotation in my left shoulder than my right. And that's actually because I'm working very hard right now on my right shoulder to get more. So they started out pretty equal, but right now my right is overpacing my left. So I, I little, I'm gonna have to, to work on that at some point. And this sequence would be an excellent way to add more shoulder rotation to your life if you were, um, were wanting to take that one on as a project. This is my favorite sequence and that's one reason we're doing it. So we're just hanging out here, we're, we're stretching. Whenever you're stretching for this work, you wanna use that same um, breathing technique that we've already done. So you wanna access that parasympathetic nervous system by using your exhales longer than your inhales, really going nice and slow on the exhales and deep slow inhales as well thinking about finding the tension that's preventing your stretch from going further and asking very kindly for that tension to release there's no need to force anything here you're just finding your edge you're using the weight of your top arm to um to assist you and just gently going from there and for all these questions just jump on and ask verbally if you want me to answer them before the end of class Deep breath in, slower breath out. Slow breath in, slower breath out. Petra, I have a question about um, the resistance that I feel. It's much more on my right shoulder because that's the, my sort of one that has the problems, but it's really a resistance in the muscle, like the tricep muscle rather than the shoulder joint. Is it, and it, it starts to hurt actually. So I have to back off. I don't have that issue on this side. And I that's just wonder if that's what I'm stretching. Is that what I'm getting the more range of motion in? Well, I mean, this, this stretch is going to address the capsule very specifically. So you are in shoulder capsule stuff, but bodies are all connected. And if what is restricting your shoulder capsule is connected to your tricep, then that's what you're going to feel most likely. So it's not unusual to feel the restriction coming from somewhere other than the joint capsule. I probably have to see that a little bit more one-on-one -on -one to give you a really good answer there, Barbara. But um, I don't think it's unusual to have that experience, but I would want to kind of work that through with you maybe a little bit offline. All right, we're going to go into the pails okay, and rails here. Yeah, you're welcome. So for the pails and rails, remembering if you're hypermobile, you're not in your end range here, everybody else uh, can, can work in their end range. Tension in your abs, starting to create some external rotation in tension, that direction, but not letting your hand move about 10%, about 20%, and about 30%, maybe holding at 30%, maybe working up to 50%. Holding at that 50%, we're going to hold for about 30 seconds here. So these longer holds are tiring. They use quite a lot of intentional muscle. But stick with it, trying to stay even, trying to stay steady. And then on my count, we're going to slowly ramp down the effort and we're going to internally rotate as much as we can supporting it if you're working with some hypermobility in that shoulder. So in three, two, one, relaxing that all down and now internally rotating further as best as you can right now. It might not move at all, but you're thinking about the shoulder rotation stuff on the inside of the joint, really pulling down as hard as you can for another three, two, one, and relax, get your top arm to maybe push you a little further and making sure this is not coming from the scapula. Slow breath in, slower breath out, trying to let the tissues relax a little bit deeper.
long exhale. Really letting the exhales be longer than the inhales. Let's do one more round of that. So now you're gonna start thinking about creating some whole body tension and starting to ramp up your pales contraction, pressing your bottom arm up into your top arm, 20%, 30%, pausing at 30% and holding. Chris, would you mind letting somebody into the room? Okay, holding there and then getting ready to reverse into your rails. We're going to dial it down three, two, one. Now reverse, pulling down into more internal rotation. This is your 100% work. Really trying to create more rotation without letting your scapula move. Pressing down just five more seconds here. Four, three, two, one. Relax completely. Use your top arm to see if you can get even a little bit more stretch out there without forcing anything. Slow breath out. In and out. And in and out. Okay, and staying right where we are, we're going to go right into those passive range holds. So for this one, again, if you've got hypermobility going on, you're gonna find a new spot and you're just going to do some um, internal rotation into your other hand. You're gonna press down, but you're not gonna necessarily be close to your end range. So you're still working on internal rotation here and you're just gonna hold and try to create some force there. So everybody else, you're going to go into your end range. And now you're going to try to create more internal rotation as well. You're gonna press as though you're pressing into the ground by rotating your arm. Now you're gonna slowly remove your top hand. You're gonna to try to hold that exact position for one, two, three, four, five, and relax. Try to go a little bit deeper passively, create tension, create tension in your arm, try to pull into deeper internal rotation, slowly and gently lift the top arm, try to maintain that position for a count of five, four, three, two, one, and relax that out and get a little bit deeper if you can, create internal abdominal tension, bracing, press the arm down a little bit further and lift the top arm, hold for five, four, three, two, one. Relax that up completely. One more here, bracing the abs, getting the shoulder working, try to get more internal rotation out of it, holding there. Don't let the arm move as you lift the other hand for five, four, three, two, one. Hand goes back, relax. One breath here and then gently bring that arm back. Shauna, I'm shaking here, so it's definitely not unusual to shake. All right, so from here, we're gonna go back into the eccentrics. So for this one, now you're gonna start creating a little bit of a tug of war or a, I guess a, I don't know that, arm wrestling between your two hands. So top hand is pushing, bottom hand is resisting, neither is winning. You're somewhere between 50 and 60% tension here. It's not crazy hard work. You're gonna start letting the top hand win. You're gonna go nice and slowly, kind of a, a five count-ish down, all the way down. Pause at the bottom, relax at the bottom. Top hand lifts you all the way back up. Tension through your abs, start resisting your two hands. Now the top hand wins. You're resisting all the way down, this pure rotation all the way to your personal end range today. Pause, relax completely. Lift that floppy bottom arm back up. Now we're gonna start that resistance again. Top hand is pressing, bottom hand is resisting. The top hand gets to win, which is good, it lost last time. All the way down. Nice and slow, 
pause at your end bottom, relax, lift back up. One more. So there's some resistance, you're holding this resistance, and then the right arm gets to win. Left arm rotates internally, pauses, relaxes, comes all the way back up. Boom, like so. Okay, as usual, everything takes longer than I thought, and I'm going to run out of time, but I want to do one more exercise with you because I really wanted you to get a sense of some of the variety of exercises that you can experience in a kin stretch class. So we're going to do some end range rotations, and we're going to do them in shoulder flexion, or sorry, shoulder extension. So you've got options here. If you want to sit or kneel, you can sit or kneel in any position you like. Uh, it would look like this. You're gonna be lifting your hand into extension. You're gonna be watching that you're not doing anything too wonky with your shoulder, but you're gonna lift it straight up as far as you can behind you. Which way your palm faces is up to you. You can also do this exercise lying flat down. So forehead on the ground, hand up. It will be slightly harder if you do it lying face down. I'm going to stay face down because I'm here and I'd like to get everything done. And I am going to get a timer because this is a timed exercise. So what we're going to be doing here is you're going to use your left hand to start. And we're just going to do the nicest circles we can with our shoulders. So we're trying to create, imagine you had a marker in your hand, you were drawing a tennis ball. You'd want to make the best tennis ball that you possibly could, as round and controlled as you can make it. It might not be as round and controlled as you'd like it to be, though. So you're in your extension, your best extension. You're holding your arm up as much as you can. We're gonna go for 20 seconds in one direction, 20 seconds in the other. So you can start now and you're creating beautiful round circles in whatever direction you started with. I'm starting, uh, I guess clockwise, it doesn't really matter. As long as you can remember when you switch directions, trying to make them smooth. Notice what bits are not as smooth as you might like them to be. Pause reverse thinking about creating the circle from your shoulder joint you're not moving your hand you're not rotating your shoulder you're actually making a circle here as smooth a circle as you possibly can i know mine looks more like i don't know a jaggedy star just a few more seconds here lifting up it's a lot of work you're still working with effort here you're not just flopping in your circle and you can let that arm relax down so that's an end range rotation i'm going to show you in kneeling for the other side and you can stay in whatever position you've chosen so in kneeling you're still working in extension your arm is straight behind you and again i'm not worrying about what rotational angle you're starting in and now you're just going to think about creating some circles you're driving the circle with your shoulder joint but your hand is following and if you had a marker attached to your hand you would want to be drawing the world's nicest circle this could be a good exercise of the workshop if we had a whiteboard and some markers. Drawing a beautiful circle here, really trying to get it smooth in all directions, thinking about driving from the shoulder joint all the way, pause, and then reverse it. Make sure you're not um, missing out on the side that's close to your body. Definitely press inwards and upwards. Try to make it through effort. There's definitely some concrete in the room. Just a few more seconds here. Try not to move anything except for that one glenohumeral joint and then letting that go completely. We're gonna come down to lie on the ground for just a couple of minutes of breathing. And we're gonna finish just one minute late before we move into questions, okay? Okay, so you can come to any position you want for this breathing work. We're gonna be working on relaxation. So I do recommend that you try it lying down. I'm gonna lie down with my head on my half dome and my knees bent. You could have your knees out straight. You could have your feet on a chair. You could lie on your side. You could even lie on your front. It's totally up to you. So when you're doing parasympathetic breath work, the real key is to have an exhale that's longer than your inhale. And it could be really any amount longer, but the more time you spend with the length of exhale, the more you get the relaxing effects of this breathing, unless of course you are panicking because you're exhaling for too long for your body right now. So I'm going to start uh, by suggesting that we try a count of in for four, hold for two, out for six, hold for two. If that feels like too much for you, then I invite you to change the count so that it's a little bit more appropriate for your body right now. Maybe a shorter exhale, maybe no hold at the end of the exhale. 
The key is to stay relaxed and to gradually increase the amount of exhaling and holding as your body allows. So very gently, very kindly, very softly, and without triggering that kind of carbon dioxide panic that uh, your body can actually adapt to less carbon dioxide, but only if you give it that chance in a relaxed manner. I won't talk the whole time because I think it's important for you to have a chance to find your own count. I will suggest that you breathe in through your nose and out through your mouth with a relaxed jaw. I find that helps create a longer, less panicky exhale. And think about almost like fogging up a mirror, very gentle, sighing out the air. You don't need to, uh, to force it out at all. So starting with an inhale here, you're going to go in, two, three, four, hold, two, out, two, three, four, five, six, hold, two, in, two, three, four, out, as I hold, two, out, two, three, four, five, six, hold, two, in, two, three, four, hold, two, out, two, three, four, five, six, hold, two. And letting you go on your own speed now, with your own count. Always thinking about keeping things very relaxed. Always asking if you could exhale for a little bit longer, hold for a little bit longer, and letting yourself be completely okay with whichever answer comes back to you. Nice, slow breaths through the nose, thinking about breathing into the rib cage, allowing your ribs to expand in all 360 degree directions. Exhaling softly through a relaxed jaw, letting your tongue be soft. Holding gently. Nice, relaxed inhales into those ribs. Soft holds. Maybe exhaling a little bit longer each time. Perhaps thinking about extending that exhale count to a count of eight. Perhaps thinking about extending the holds to a count of four. For my body personally, I like an in for four, hold for four, out for eight, hold for two or three. That's about right for me right now. Just taking two more breaths here at your own relaxed pace. And then returning to your normal breathing pattern, and no matter what pattern you were using, just taking a second to lie on your mat and let everything start to sink and melt into your mat. I invite you to close your eyes here. I invite you to check in with your feet, letting your heels be heavy, letting your legs flop open however they want to. Letting the weight of your calves be warm and heavy and melting on the ground. Letting the weight of your thigh bones sink into the floor beneath you. Allowing your pelvis to melt into the floor, feeling the support of the ground underneath you. Letting your entire rib cage soften into the ground. Letting your shoulder blades soften. Letting both arms relax and be heavy on the ground, feeling the floor beneath your forearms, beneath your elbows, beneath the back of your hands. Taking your attention up to the back of your head, letting your head relax completely, being heavy on the ground, being warm, melting into the floor. Letting your tongue be heavy, letting your eyeballs relax. And your forehead muscles relax completely. Everything melting. Taking a nice soft breath here. 
And then staying here if you wish, or slowly rolling to your side and then coming up to seated. So I hope that you enjoyed this kin stretch class. This is an introduction to some of the basic exercises and movements that we teach in kin stretch. The goal of this class was to expose you to some of these basic exercises and also to work on our shoulder internal rotational range. So rotation both externally and internally is the foundational movement of our shoulder joint. We don't get good flexion or good extension without good rotation. So in addition to just keeping your shoulder joint healthy by moving it through a full range of motion, you really need to uh, consider your rotational capacity as foundational for all other movements of the shoulder. So you can absolutely use this class or the pails and rails um, and then the, uh, the holds and the eccentrics as a routine to increase your shoulder mobility if you wish to. Uh, you can also, of course, uh, take more kin stretch or mobility classes uh, in order to get exposed to more of the movements that will um, help you understand how to kind of build that body control awareness, range of motion, and strong, sustainable joints. So thank you for joining me, and I am going to switch now to questions.